In New York, during the 2012 invasion, clips from Avengers and Avengers Endgame's recall Loki's escape using the Tesseract during the time heist. Loki is transported to the Gobi Desert in Mongolia, where his shackles are broken. He is approached by several locals and immediately proclaims his divinity. A time panel opens, revealing three soldiers from the Time Variance Authority who begin to scan the cube. As Loki tries to take it, another soldier appears, identifying a time sequence violation. The leader takes note of the trend in the time variance and places him under arrest for crimes against the sacred timeline. Loki again uses his godly prowess to assert authority, but the leader places him into a time warp that causes him to move at 1 16th speed, allowing ample time for the arrest. The leader calls for the timeline to be reset before leaving with the Loki variant. Loki steps through the time panel into the main office of the TVA. The leader Hunter B-15 places the Tesseract into evidence before placing Loki in a cell, where he is disrobed by a droid before being dropped into a room in a TVA jump suit. He is asked to sign a document, confirming everything he has ever said. After signing, Loki is dropped to the next room, and is asked to identify himself once again before stepping through a machine that captures his temporal aura. Loki then enters a room where he is given a ticket made to wait in line, and he sees a cartoon of Miss Minutes, who describes the multiverse war, in which several timelines battled for supremacy, nearly resulting in the total destruction of everything, until the timekeepers merged the multiverse into the the sacred timeline. Because Loki purposefully stepped out of the sacred timeline, he is now identified as a variant. Loki's escape with the Tesseract triggered a Nexus event, which could severely alter the sacred timeline and lead to another multiversal war. The goal of Loki's arrest is to place him back in the sacred timeline after his trial. Ahead of Loki, another variant is disintegrated for not having his ticket. Loki anxiously scrambles for his as the title sequence starts. In France, Mobius is being debriefed on a Nexus event that led to the deaths of a hunter and several Minutemen. He takes note of the stab sounds, as a hunter tells him this is the sixth attack in the past week. A child enters the church, and he asks her who killed the men. She points to a stained glass image of the devil. Mobius notices her teeth are blue, and discovers that the variant left behind a bubblegum. For the children in 16th century France, before setting the reset charge, Mobius is informed of local Loki's apprehension. In the courtroom, Loki admonishes the judge for his arrest, assigning blame for the timeline event to the Avengers. Loki claims to have identified two different Tony Starks by scent, bringing him to the conclusion that the Avengers were time traveling in an event to stop him from ascending to God King. Mobius enters the courtroom and sits in on Loki's testimony. Loki requests a task force to stop them, but is informed by the judge that their actions were supposed to happen and his escape was not. Loki he demands to speak directly to the timekeepers, but is again requested a plea by the judge. Tries to use his power but cannot use magic within the TVA. He is found guilty and assigned to be reset. Before he is taken out, Mobius approaches the bench, and the judge reluctantly gives him permission to go ahead with his plan. He takes Loki down to his office, where Loki again admonishes the timekeepers and the TVA as he had never heard of them before. Mobius tells him it's because until he escaped, he had been been living within his set path. He tries to step out of line, but Mobius resets him and seats him. Loki explains his plan to conquer Earth once he returns, followed by Asgard, the Nine Realms and space. Explains his motives, while Mobius intently listens. Mobius plays back Loki's greatest hits, recalling his apprehension by the Avengers. He shows Loki the memory of him, stabbing Phil Coulson with the scepter, as well as several people he killed and tortured in his pursuit of power. He plays back a memory of Loki on an airplane, where it is revealed that Loki was in this sacred timeline. The infamous hijacker D.B. Cooper, who takes a hostage with a bomb threat. He steals the plane along with the ransom, before jumping from the cockpit and taking the Bifrost Bridge back to Asgard. Mobius then shows Loki the timeline after, had he not escaped up to the death of Frigga. He finally identifies Loki for his purpose, not to rule, but to conquer. Loki shows signs of understanding the pain he has caused to others and to himself. Mobius helps him to his feet as a hunter enters the room to tell him about the situation. The hunter tells Mobius that while he was talking to Loki, they lost another unit. Mobius goes back into the room and finds Loki missing with his time twister. 
Loki finds the Tesseract in a drawer with several infinity stones from different timelines. He is amazed at how the treasures he sought are being used in an office as paperweights, and becomes completely enamored of the Time Variance Authority. As hunters enter to disintegrate Loki, he loops back to his cell, where he watches forward in time to his mother's death. He later fast forwards to Odin's death in Ragnarok. He finally finds his death at the literal hands of Thanos in Infinity War, ending Loki's file. A hunter fights Loki, who is able to disarm her, and place the time twister on her. Loki sits alone in his cell, and is approached by an armed Mobius. The two have an honest conversation, where Loki admits to his own manipulative nature. Mobius asks about the Tesseract, and Loki laughingly proclaims that even Infinity Stones can't be used in the TVA. He tells him that he cannot offer salvation, but could use his help in tracking a fugitive variant who has been killing his Minutemen. Mobius claims that the variant they are hunting is him, deduced by the horned figures found throughout, the same as Loki's horned crown. In Salina, Oklahoma, 1858, four hunters emerge from a panel and discover a futuristic item dug into the ground. One hunter tells another to disintegrate it, as they notice a cloaked figure in the distance amid a green mist. The figure drops a lantern, lighting oil on the ground ablaze. The Minutemen are set on fire as one crawls a ward to activate the reset charge, but is ultimately killed as the figure takes the charge. In Oshkosh, Wisconsin, 1985 at a Renaissance Fair, TVA Minutemen emerge. A variant is identified and followed by the team into a tent. The commander is placed under a green spell and she takes out the team while the variant watches. As she is released from the spell, the variant kills the last Minuteman and takes his tracker along with the unconscious commander through a time panel. Miss Minutes quizzes Loki on Nexus events. He angrily bats at her hologram with his magazine until she disappears into a monitor. Mobius picks up Loki and gives him a TVA jacket. They meet with Hunter B-52, who tells them about the attack. Enough temporal aura has been collected to identify the fugitive as a Loki variant but they are unsure which one. According to Mobius, several Loki variants have been pruned in different timelines, each with a different style. Mobius reminds the team that Loki is with them as an expert on the variant they are hunting. When he suggests that getting his powers back might entice him to betray the team, Mobius teases him with an audience before the time keepers. The team arrives at the Ren Fair shortly after the event, so as not to further damage the flow of time. Mobius and the team quiz Loki further on TVA protocols. Loki explains his variant's intentions, and suggests an ultimatum, which Mobius refuses. The reset charge goes off, pruning anything from outside the present timeline. Back at the TVA, in Judge Renslayer's office, Mobius discusses the mission. The two draw comparisons between Loki's behaviors and each other's. Mobius asks if there is a possibility that this Loki variant is acting differently than the others they have caught, because he truly wants to be better. The judge proclaims the only possibility of that would be if the timekeepers decree it. She gives him one more chance with Loki. Mobius signs the event report and leaves. Outside the judge's office, Loki defensively tries to explain his deception in the field. Mobius identifies his naivete in believing that Loki's need for validation would drive him to want to help. He then calls out Loki on his plan to hijack the sacred timeline after meeting with the Time Keepers. Mobius assigns Loki to review the previous variant's crimes in an effort to figure him out. Loki reads through the papers, noticing the pattern of murdering the Minutemen and stealing their reset charges. He tries to go to Librarian into letting him read other files, but she provides him with another dossier filled with Loki variant case files. Loki comes across the case file for the destruction of Asgard in Ragnarok, which hasn't happened yet to Loki's knowledge, he missed that part on his file. Loki tells Mobius that his variant is likely hiding out in apocalypses. They discuss the chaotic alterations of a predetermined outcome which could produce a new timeline. Mobius suggests trapping the Loki variant in Ragnarok. He laughs off Loki's theory but humors the conversation. 
In Pompeii, Italy, just prior to the surge eruption of Mount Vesuvius in 79 AD, Loki and Mobius stand in a city awaiting its destruction, to play a prank on the townspeople. He then frees some goats and proclaims in Latin, that he is there to bring dark tidings, and that they will all die. At that moment, the volcano erupts. Mobius picks up no time variance energy in Loki's actions. Even though, he might have created a nexus event, the apocalypse of the eruption creates the perfect hiding spot amazed. So Mobius returns them to the TVA. Now chasing a new hunch, Mobius and Loki investigate doomsday disasters to pinpoint exact locations where the variant might be hiding. The two take a break, and Mobius shares his love for jet skis with him. Even though he can never own one, Mobius keeps a magazine from the 1990s on jet skis to remind him of what they are fighting for. Loki begins to talk once again about the Time Keepers and how they created the TVA and Mobius. Mobius. Mobius shoots back with the question of how Loki came to be, extrapolating from that how Loki's existence as a god of Asgard is no different. Mobius goes on to poignantly express the chaos of existence, and how his disregard of overthinking helps him to get on with his purpose in life. Loki goes on to discuss the concept of freedom in a timeline, where past, present, and future are predetermined by the time keepers. This leads to his next query, as to how it will end, and without an answer from Mobius, Loki seems to have made his point. Mobius goes on to express the timekeeper's goal, to unite the future into the sacred timeline, so that the TVA and all of existence can meet peacefully at the end of time. When Loki reminds Mobius of a name he once called him, Mobius remembers the gum from the previous episode. They track the gum to a time period, and search it for doomsday events. Loki identifies the location, as an apocalyptic event in Alabama in the year 2050. Mobius discusses the mission with the judge. Ravana expresses her concerns for Loki, which Mobius responds to with enthusiasm for catching the variant. She reluctantly approves the mission, but tells him there won't be much she can do if it doesn't work. The lead hunter B-15 identifies the event as a Class 10 apocalypse. The team arrives in Haven Hills, as a cataclysmic storm is tearing through the area. They arrives at enters a Roxgart superstore. B-15 orders Mobius to leave Loki with her. Loki agrees, much to Mobius' chagrin. In the surveillance room, the variant watches and sets a timer. Loki attempts to talk to B-15, but she silences him. They approach a customer, taking advantage of the store's hurricane sale. Loki advises B-15 to interrogate the customer, as it might be the variant. The customer grabs her, placing the green mind control spell on her before fainting. The spell causes B-15 to act as an avatar for the variant, who engages Loki in conversation. The variant confirms its identity as a Loki. Mobius and his team come to a shelter within the store, where one of the hunters frantically begins to search for a bag. When Mobius confronts him, another hunter arrives with news that he found C-20 the captured hunter from before. She is sitting in a room terrified, mumbling it's real. Loki discusses the situation with his variant, before she passes the spell onto a store employee, and then promptly faints. Loki now challenges his variant to show his true form, rather than hide behind innocence. Loki proclaims his intention to overthrow the timekeepers. The variant's avatar expresses his disinterest, while the real variant sets a reset charge. Mobius speaks to C-20, who tells them that she told Loki where the timekeepers are. B-15 wakes up and looks around, appearing afraid. Loki catches the variant's reset charges, but is attacked by a much larger avatar. The two fight as Mobius and B-15 reunite. The variant sets another timer, as Loki gets up to confront the avatar, as the variant removes his mind control from it. Behind the avatar, the variant reveals itself as a female Loki, who sends the reset charges to different locations, in time before death and this creates several nexus events. The TVA witnesses all this, causing all hunters, Minutemen, and even the judge go into action. The variant opens a time panel and waves to Loki, as she walks through it. Mobius and the team run to Loki, demanding he wait for them. But Loki follows his variant into the panel. 
C20 and Lady Loki sit in a restaurant, dressed casually, enjoying their frozen Mai Tais. Lady Loki remarks, as to how brain freeze can lock memories in place, and coaxes her into drinking quickly, causing the sensation. She takes advantage of the situation, and asks C20 how many people are guarding the timekeepers. Recognizing that she is in an illusion, C20 attempts to engage the variant, but she manages to find out how to access them. In the department store, C20 unconscious and under mind control, tells her the elevators to the timekeepers are gold, and she notices Loki and the TVA on the surveillance monitors. And the title sequence starts. The variant enters the TVA through a panel, and attempts to use her mind control on a Minuteman. It doesn't work, and the soldier attempts to prune her. She takes his weapon and prunes him instead. Three more soldiers attack her, but she defeats them. Loki appears from the panel, and realizes he is in the TVA locker room. Walks through the hallways with two daggers, as the variant approaches the gold elevator. He approaches her, and she brushes off the engagement but brandishes a sword. The two fight, until Judge Renslayer appears with two soldiers. As the variant takes Loki hostage, he uses a tempad device to open a panel, to an undisclosed location. The variant expresses disgust with the title of Loki, as the main one uses his powers. As the two are about to engage, it is revealed they are on the planet Lamentus one in the year 2077. During a meteorite storm, preceding the cataclysmic impact of its moon, after running to a safer location, the variant takes advantage of Loki by trying to take control of his mind. Loki tells her his mind is too strong, and offers a truce since he has hidden the tempad. She tells him that he interrupted a plan that was years in the making. She suggests they draw power from the moon in order to recharge the tempad to get them off Lamentus One, and the variant identifies herself as Sylvie. Loki tries to analyze Sylvie's plan, which seems to be to wipe out all of existence in a grip for power. The two search for a place to recharge the device, and finally come upon a standalone house. Sylvie kicks in the door, and is immediately knocked back by a pulse generator. Loki apologizes for the intrusion, and the woman kindly accepts but denies them entry. Seeing a picture, Loki makes himself look like her dead husband, in an effort to appeal. But she ain't buying it, so she zaps him too. She identifies the two as devils, before stepping out with her pulse generator. Tells them that the rest of the people are on the evacuation vessel. And she tells them how to get there. At the train station, Loki disguises himself as a guard to bring Sylvie onto the train. Though another guard doesn't buy it, Sylvie's mind controls him into letting them on. The two briefly argue before discussing each other. Loki tells Sylvie about how Frigga would teach him magic as a child. She barely remembers her mother and concedes to Loki's prowess with his abilities. She tells him that she taught herself magic. Sylvie shares the story of a relationship she had with a postman during the early days of her plan. And Loki admits to never being in love. She reminds him that they are going to use this civilization only hope to recharge the tempad before taking a nap. She wakes to Loki singing, along with the band in the dining cart. A patron leaves as Loki takes a solo, looking into Sylvie's eyes as he does. Before clapping the rest of the patrons and staff into a dance, toasting a drink to Sylvie. She scolds Loki and tells him of her suspicions, that others were looking at her. And that he is back in his variant jacket, and not in disguise. Guards enter and take on Loki and Sylvie, ultimately throwing them off the train. Sylvie demands the tempad from Loki. He reveals a destroyed device, and the two argue over their impending doom, before sitting down. Sylvie tells Loki that the Ark evacuation vessel never leaves the planet, so he suggests they hijack the Ark to ensure it gets off the planet. On the way, Sylvie tells Loki how she controls minds. She tells him that all TVA hunters and Minutemen are variants from different realms and timelines. Loki realizes that the timekeepers did not create the TVA agents, as Miss Minute said in episode 1. He also realizes that the agents, hunters, and Minutemen are not aware of their true identities. The two arrive at the Ark, and Loki realizes the people are going to be left to die. They attempt to run around the crowd, but are interrupted by the impact of the moon. The vessel is ultimately destroyed, as the two watch on. The episode opens on a flashback to Asgard, where a child Loki is arrested as a variant by Minutemen, who set off a reset charge, which prunes the child's toy, indicating that the toy and presumably the child both did not belong in that time period. The child is brought before the TVA and processed in the same way Loki was. 
In trial, the child steals the hunter's tempad and escapes into a panel. The hunter is revealed to be Ravana Renslayer. She is next seen entering the room of the timekeepers as the title sequence starts. Ravana meets Mobius and the two discuss the situation. Mobius asks to speak with C20 since she was enchanted by Sylvie in episode 2. Ravana tells him that C20 is dead. And she tells Mobius that after she was brought back, she declined rapidly and died. She then asks him to keep it between them, and tasks him with finding the rest of the variants. On Lamentus 1, Sylvie sits in preparation for her doom as Loki slowly approaches her. He apologizes to her, and she tells him about about her memories of Asgard. Sylvie claims that her birth as the goddess of mischief was enough to cause the TVA to arrest her. She claims to have stolen a tempad and run before she could face trial, and has been running ever since. Everywhere she goes sets off a nexus event, so she hid in the end of a thousand worlds as she grew up. At the TVA, Mobius and Hunter B-15 discuss the situation as they track the variants. B-15 asks about C-20, but Mobius claims ignorance. On Momentous 1, Loki and Sylvie discuss their existence. Loki tells her that they may lose, but they survive. As the planet comes to its end, B-15 is able to isolate their location in the sacred timeline, approaching the red line rapidly. Two panels appear on Lamentus 1. Loki and Sylvie walk through them back to the TVA, where they are immediately arrested. Mobius scolds Loki for betraying him, before sending him through a red prison panel. Loki is approached by Sif, who attacks him in what Loki identifies as a bad memory prison. Sif comes in again and repeats the same scene, without Loki's good memory of what he did after. Loki now identifies the prison as a time loop, attempts to reconcile with his memory, but she again attacks him. Mobius meets with Ravana and asks to interrogate the other variant. The judge outright refuses and claims that no one speaks with the variant. She orders him to work his Loki. B-15 asks Mobius if Loki said anything to him before being put in the time loop. He tells her that Loki said the TVA was lying to him. She expresses concern and says she was just asking. Loki continues his loop with Sif, and he makes an honest effort to empathize with Sif's pain that he caused and explains his selfish reasons. Sif helps to him feet without violence, but still tells him off before leaving him alone once again. Mobius then enters and asks Loki if he is ready to talk. In the interrogation room, Loki comments on his relationship with Mobius, as a similar loop to his recent prison. Mobius gives Loki a chance to explain how the TVA is lying to him, but Loki only offers to let him out first. Now dismissing the claim, Mobius moves on to ask Loki how long he has been working for the variant. He scoffs at the question, and honestly describes her character. Mobius asks him what caused the Nexus event on Lamentus 1, refuses to comply, considering that he would be pruned after cooperating. Mobius gets up and reactivates the tempad to the time loop. Claims that Sylvie had come to Loki on Asgard long ago and took him to one of her apocalypses. That was where they made their plan together. He tells Mobius that once their plan is complete, he will dispose of her. So he tells Loki that Sylvie has already been pruned by B-15. Loki feigns acceptance and Mobius puts it together. The Nexus event was caused by two Loki variants being attracted to one another. Mobius teases Loki for liking Sylvie, and describes how the narcissism of Loki is what is causing these cataclysmic events in the sacred timeline. Loki demands to know if Sylvie is alive and Mobius concedes for now. After an argument, Loki finally explains to Mobius that everyone at the TVA is a variant kidnapped by the timekeepers. He tells Mobius that Sylvie can use her enchantment to recall their memories that were erased by them. Mobius doesn't believe him and brings in two Minutemen to take Loki away. In the hallway, B-15 stands alone with a conflicted look on her face. She prepares to prune Sylvie in her cell and takes Sylvie through a time panel. Ravana signs off on Mobius' case report on Loki. Loki tries to talk to Mobius, but he asks why he wasn't allowed to interrogate Sylvie. She tells him that they can't risk her escaping, as Loki did under his first interrogate. Ravana tells Mobius that the timekeepers want to personally witness the pruning of the variant, with him present. Mobius asks her when she first noticed what was going on with C-20. Ravana attempts to deflect the question, but Mobius presses on. She tells him that the truth is that she was protecting Mobius. She didn't want him losing his mind, the way C-20 did. Ravana praises their work and the reasons they do it. As she goes to place a sword on her trophy wall, 
Mobius switches their tempads, while her back is turned. Mobius thanks her for the drinks and leaves the office. At the Roxgart store, B-15 emerges with Sylvie. B-15 asks Sylvie how she was able to create the illusion, when she was under enchantment. Sylvie dispels B-15's identity, as a creation of the Time Keepers, since her enchantment cannot create memories. What B-15 saw was her life before the TVA. She tells her that they are all variants, and willingly lets Sylvie enchant her. She sees her memories and cries, remembering how happy she once was. With her memories fully intact, and B-15 asks what now? At the TVA, Mobius finds a quiet part of the library to review Ravana's tempad. It confirms the death of C-20. He reviews her interrogation where she identifies herself and everyone at the TVA as variants. Ravana interrupts and ends the interrogation. Loki is back in his time cell, but is approached by Mobius. Mobius demands to know if Loki truly wants to be alone, or if he wants to be with Sylvie. Because that Nexus event could destroy everything. He asks Loki if Sylvie implanted memories into C-20. Loki says no. Mobius agrees that Loki and Sylvie were right about the TVA. He tells Loki to trust him if he wants to save Sylvie. The two leave the prison and arrive to an ambush by Ravana and several Minutemen. She immediately relinquishes her tempad. Mobius stands firmly and expresses his desire to go back to his life before the TVA took him and erased his memories. Ravana orders him to be pruned and Loki looks on in horror. He is escorted out to the elevator to the Time Keepers. Ravana enters Sylvie's cell and immediately demands to know who was with her. The Minuteman outside the door tells her B-15 insisted. Ravana declares B-15 another hunter, compromised by the variant. Sylvie arrives with Loki at the Golden Elevator. Ravana dismisses the Minutemen and takes the two herself. On their way, Sylvie asks Ravana what her Nexus event was that caused her to be arrested as a child. And Ravana tells her she does not remember. The three arrive at the Hall of the Time Keepers. Loki and Sylvie engage the Time Keepers in conversation before their deletion is ordered. B-15 interrupts the execution, and the three fight Ravana and the Minutemen. Sylvie and Ravana face off as Loki gets closer to the Time Keepers. Sylvie and Loki emerge victorious. As one Time Keepers attempts to reason with Sylvie, she throws a staff at it, knocking off its robotic head, and the other Time Keeper robots laugh. Realizing that the Time Keepers are mindless androids, Loki and Sylvie are now perplexed as to how the TVA was created. He tries to explain his feelings for Sylvie to her, but is pruned by Ravana. Sylvie easily overpowers her, and Ravana tells her to prune her. But Sylvie says no, you're going to tell me everything. We then see Loki wakes up in a field, and asks if he is in hell. He is told by a voice, that he will be, unless he goes with variant Loki, Thor, and Heimdall. The episode opens in the hallway to the golden elevator to the Time Keepers. A dissolve leads us through the room of the fallen Time Keepers and to the void. That the area where Loki woke up in the last episode. He is informed by another Loki variant that they must escape from Eliath, a giant cloud monster that will eat them otherwise. And the title sequence starts. Sylvie takes Ravana down to the courtroom and demands her tempad. She gives it to her, and Ravana tells Sylvie that Loki is still alive. She explains the existence of the Void as a purgatory-ish dimension, where the pruning devices send everything. She claims it to be located at the end of time, and that nothing comes back from there. Ravana asks Sylvie to trust her, and Sylvie gives her back the tempad. In the Void, Loki is trying to make sense of his environment and surroundings. More variants appear, including an ally alligator with a Loki crown. It dawns on Loki that even the alligator is a variant of himself, pruned by the TVA and sent to the void, to be eaten by Eliath. Loki suggests a plan to escape, but his variants tell him that's impossible. As they continue along, the kid Loki is identified as the leader, having caused a nexus event by killing Thor. They arrive at a bomb shelter, where the variants show Loki their home. At the TVA, Ravana has Miss Minutes access time records to learn about the founding 
ending of the TVA, Sylvie changes her mind to see about the end of time, which Ravana reminds her is just the void. Sylvie proposes an idea to go past the void. Miss Minutes asks Ravana about the void spacecraft, which Ravana says is still in prototype. She looks for the file, while Ravana offers to find Loki with Sylvie. The two shake hands but Sylvie's suspicions arise. As Miss Minutes takes a little longer to locate the file, several Minutemen barge into the room. In order to escape, Sylvie prunes herself. One of the guards states his observation to Ravana, who dusts herself off and leaves the room. Satisfied that now Sylvie is dead too. In the shelter, boastful Loki tells of how he defeated Captain America and Iron Man, acquiring the six Infinity Stones in the process. Gator Loki admonishes his pride, but boastful Loki makes fun of it, for setting off a Nexus event, by killing the wrong neighbor's cat. Classic Loki tells the story of how he was able to cast an illusion of himself so real, even Thanos believed it as he snapped his neck. He then found a planet where he lived alone, until his loneliness brought up a desire to see his brother Thor. But trying to leave the planet set off a Nexus event, and he was arrested by the TVA and pruned. He claims Loki to be the god of outcasts. Loki asks the four if they ever encountered a woman variant, and they have not. He tells them that she wants to take down the TVA, and attempts to rally them to help, but they all laugh. Loki decides to leave on his own, and he is confronted by many more variants, including another one as President Loki. Sylvie awakens inside an abandoned van, and she escapes it as Eliath approaches. While using her magic to see a vision, she hears a horn and notices a car being driven, and is picked up by Mobius. In the shelter, President Loki and boastful Loki have a brief standoff for control of the Loki army in the throne, before Gator Loki bites off President Loki's right hand. There is a battle royale among the variants, and our Loki does his best to stay out of it. Loki follows Classic, Kid, and Gator Loki's through a portal, while the rest duke it out. The variants talk about how they are arrested by the TVA anytime they try to improve their lives for a good greater than themselves. Loki again proposes they work with Sylvie, and the variants reluctantly accept. In the car, Mobius and Sylvie discuss their circumstances. Sylvie proposes that she and Mobius confront Eliath. They watch as it effortlessly takes out a navy battleship and its crew that appear in the void. The car approaches, and Loki immediately immediately sees Sylvie and Mobius. The variants join them and discuss the plan. Sylvie suggests, rather than kill Eliath, that she enchant it. At the TVA, Ravana uses her tempad to open a prison cell holding B-15, and she asks her what drives the Sylvie variant. B-15 tells her that it is revenge, and that she is seeking the power that lies at the end of time. She scolds Ravana for not acknowledging that the timekeepers are fake, and for not wanting her help to find who is behind this. Ravana leaves her, and she pulls up Miss Minutes and orders all files on the founding of the TVA. In the void, Mobius discusses his predicament upon returning to the TVA with the Loki variants. Loki and Sylvie talk about their Nexus event. They awkwardly discuss personal relationships and how Sylvie has never had the time for them. As she was always on the run from the TVA, Sylvie asks Loki how she knows Loki won't betray her. He tells her that he has betrayed everyone who ever loved him. He admits to knowing what he did and that he will not do it again. Loki asks Sylvie what she will do when all this is over. Both confess they do not know, but Loki proposes they figure it out together. As Eliath approaches, the Lokis watch on while Mobius asks what the next move. Sylvie tells him that when it touched her, she was able to link with it just long enough to see that Eliath knows the secrets of the TVA. If she can link to it, maybe she can enchant it. Loki claims he will stay with Sylvie. Kid Loki gives ours a golden short sword with a back scabbard. Classic Loki leaves with the kid and gator. Mobius opens a time panel and tells Loki he will burn it to the ground. Offers a handshake, but Loki goes for the hug, thanking him. He tells Sylvie she was his favorite before walking through the panel. The two Lokis approach Eliath. Classic Loki takes one last look before continuing on. Eliath draws closer to the Lokis, and Loki agrees to distract Eliath so that Sylvie will be able to enchant it. As Eliath begins to attack Sylvie, Classic Loki recreates an illusion of Asgard, so the two can get away. Marveling at his power, the Lokis realize they are more powerful than they realize. Sylvie tells Loki that he can enchant Eliath as well, because they are the same. Eliath attempts to bite through the illusion, to no avail.
scale, but Sylvie and Loki are able to touch it long enough for Loki to get the hang of the mind control enchantment. As Eliath closes in on classic Loki, he laughs as the monster devours him, leaving only his horned crown behind. As it turns to approach Loki and Sylvie, the two complete their enchantment. They open a portal to a building and walk through. The episode opens on a visual journey through space and time. As Loki and Sylvie arrive at a castle, on the other side of the door they open. The door opens and the two enter. They are greeted by Miss Minutes, who welcomes them to the citadel at the end of the time. She tells them that he who remains is impressed. He who created all, and he controls all. At the end it is only, he that remains. Minutes tells them that they can be returned to the sacred timeline, without causing a nexus event. She tells Loki that he can win not only in New York but can also kill Thanos. To obtain the Infinity Gauntlet and return to the throne of Asgard, she tells Sylvie that she can go with him and have only happy memories. Promises them the lives they've always wanted, Sylvie and Loki doubt her. Then she wishes them luck and disappears. Ravana waits on the TVA files to be downloaded and notices a ring on her table where Mobius had placed his mug. Miss Minutes appears and tells her that she got her the necessary files. Ravana tells Minutes that the the files she downloaded are not what was requested. Minutes tells her that he thinks it will be more useful before leaving. They advance with their guard up to confront he who remains. They walk into a room with statues on pedestals. An elevator bell rings and a man walks out carrying a green apple. He who remains invites the two Lokis to talk in his office. Loki identifies the being as just a man, he concedes that he is merely flesh and blood. Sylvie tries to kill him, but he is able to use his device to reset himself to safety. He then disappears as the elevator reaches his office. He invites them in, pours them drinks and offers them seats. Mobius surprises Ravana, and Ravana tells him that she had to prune him in order to keep him from stopping their mission as the timekeepers dictated it. She calls in a hunter to deal with Mobius, but he shows her pen that he used to sign the file on Loki, and tells her that the hunters won't be taking orders from her any longer. We then see B-15 at a high school in Fremont, Ohio, in the year 2018. She is being pursued by Minutemen to the office, where Ravana's pen came from. B-15 leads one into an office, where a cup filled with the same pen sits. The woman who became Judge Ravana Renslayer, walks into the room, bewildering the Minutemen. She tells him they have a lot to talk about. In the Citadel, he who remains talks with the Lokis. He admires their perseverance. Sylvie tries to attack him, but misses again. He takes out two sheets and tells them, they can't kill him, because he already knows what's going to happen. They are live scripts, like the one Loki had to sign in episode 1. He asks Sylvie how he would know to have everything in his tempad, to keep from being killed by the two of them. He tells them he has seen everything they did, including everything the TVA didn't, including the Loki's attraction toward one another. He tells that he set the road for them to walk to, in order to get to him. Sylvie asks why they were brought here, and he tells her that it was necessary for them to embark upon the journey before they could reach the end. He asks Sylvie if she thinks she can trust Loki or anyone at all. Mobius tells Ravana that he knows the TVA is a lie, and he objects to the pruning. Ravana tells Mobius that pruning the timeline prevents chaos and death. Mobius counters that it takes away free will. Ravana scoffs at the very concept, saying that the only one who truly has free will is the one in charge. Frantically packs her briefcase, as Mobius confronts her on betraying him. She opens a time panel, Mobius tries to prune her, but she easily disarms him. Rather than prune him again, she walks through the time panel. As she says, in search of free will, he who remains admits to his deceptive methods, but assures them that without the TVA, everything would burn. Loki asks what he is so afraid of, and he says me. Sylvie asks who he is, and he tells them he has been dubbed many names. A ruler, a con conqueror, he who remains, and a jerk. But it's not as simple as a name. He opens his tempad to reveal a mimetic polyalloy liquid metal being to tell the story. Eons before the TVA, a variant of he who remains was a scientist on Earth in the 31st century, who discovered that there were universes stacked on top of his own. With several variants existing at the same time, they all eventually discovered this, and began encountering one another throughout the timelines. For a time, there was peace but it was narcissistic 
artistic, self-congratulatory piece. Most of them work together, but not every variant was so nice. The variant seeking to conquer new worlds began to fight, starting the timeline war that Miss Minutes described before. Tells them how he was the only variant to encounter Eliath, a creature capable of consuming time and space itself. He experimented on it and was able to weaponize Eliath to end the multiversal war. After that he who remains isolated the timeline, and chose to monitor it in order to prevent any further branches or nexus events, thus creating the TVA and the mythology of the Time Keepers. He tells them that if they think he's evil, wait until they meet his variants. He sits back and repeats that the TVA and monitoring the timeline is necessary to prevent cataclysmic chaos. Sylvie calls him a liar. He offers them to take over, rather than kill him and let chaos ensue. Loki asks why, and he answers that he is tired and older than he looks. He tells them that he set up the timeline pruning, in order to find the one person to replace him, but instead he got two. Sylvie tells him, that he treated people's lives, like they were some kind of game. He tells her to grow up and recognize, that the three of them are villains. However, as rulers of the sacred timeline, they could do their villainy for good reason, to prevent multiversal war. A thunder crash is heard, and he who remains becomes concerned. He tells them, that they just crossed the threshold. He then becomes concerned, as he no longer knows what is going to happen. We are shown outside as the sacred timeline, begins to branch off into its separate origins. He tells that they can either take over for him, and maintain the sacred timeline, or kill him, and cause his variants to start another multiversal war, which would end with him once again again, ruling and overseeing the flow of time. He removes his tempad and places it on the table, and tells them the honesty feels like a fresh start. Sylvie goes to kill him, but Loki stops her. Loki tells her that he thinks, he who remains is telling the truth. Loki expresses concern for unleashing something worse, if they kill him. He suggests they think about it. He tells Sylvie that she is unable to trust, and he cannot be trusted. Sylvie attacks Loki, and the two fights using their magic. She accuses him of wanting power, before going for the kill. Loki appears before her, and pleads for her to stop. Tells her that he doesn't want to hurt her, he doesn't want the throne, and he just wants her to be okay. She tells him that she isn't him, before pushing him through a time panel. Takes the tempad, and confronts he who remains. She stabs him through the heart, and he tells her he will see her soon before dying. Now all alone, Sylvie sits back on the floor. As the timeline continues to branch further and further, Mobius and B-15 watch from the TVA, as the Nexus events all branch irreversibly through the red line. Loki sits in a room in the TVA, and considers the situation before leaving. He walks through the TVA in search of Mobius and B-15. He tells them they can't stop the branches. Mobius and B-15 do not recognize Loki, as this is a different timeline. Loki recognizes the Time Keeper statue now, bears the resemblance of he who remains. We then see the Loki file is stamped with the title, Loki will return, in season 2. Thanks for watching, take care, and see you in the next video.